you get hit with one of those things, you could get killed. Just that simple. I'm not sure I want to go anymore. I'm Cyril Shoke, and I spend my life traveling the world chasing monster fish. <laughs> and if there's one place on Earth that has a lot of monsters, it's the deep south. From the wild swamps to the mouth of the Mississippi and the Gulf of Mexico. Look at the size of this shark. Louisiana is filled with all kinds of creatures. There's got to be hundreds of gators here. And I'm here after two types of prehistoric predators. The armor-plated alligator gar, and also the huge sharks that can be found along the coast. Like the bull shark, and especially the dusky shark. A massive predator reaching over 10 feet long. But fighting these monsters is going to be tough. I'm afraid I'm going to lose this fish. Because the southern wilderness can be a hostile place. Rattlesnake. This thing will ruin your life. Careful, man. Careful. Got me good. That's the fish I've been looking for. Oh. I'm telling you, the waters here in Louisiana are full of monster fish. And the biggest of them all are two prehistoric predators that have been hunting these waters for millions of years. Sharks that prowl in the brackish and salt waters along the Gulf of Mexico, and the alligator gar that hunts in the muddy backwaters of the bayou. Louisiana is located on the Gulf of Mexico. It's a place where nature can wreak havoc. Whether it's the deadly storms that devastate its coastline, or it's wild predators. But I'm starting with a fish that's getting a lot of attention for all the wrong reasons. I'm meeting with Joey, a local crawfish fisherman who says that his daily commute to work in the swamp is getting more and more dangerous because of an invasive species of fish. Originally from Asia, silver carp jump when they're startled, causing real chaos on the water. In their native environment, they don't seem to be a problem, but they're now spreading across North America and have become a real danger to anyone in a motorboat. Joey? Hey, man, how you doing, sir? Pretty good. Nice pretty good to, yourself? Nice to meet you, man. Nice good to meet you, too. Ready to come get rock? Rock, how bad? Uh, pretty bad, man. Pretty bad, pretty bad. I'm going to show you my little drive to work every morning. That's what you have to go through every day? Yeah, about 20, 25-minute bull rod. Asian carp jumping five, six foot high in the water. Big fish? Big fish. 20, 25, 30-pound fish. I know guys got hit in the face, reconstructed their face. I know guys got hit in the ribs, got knocked out, fell overboard. You get hit with one of those things, you could get killed. Just that simple. I'm not sure I want to go anymore. No, I'll let you get in the back. I got a little football helmet for you to wear. <laughs> <laughs> These 30-pound rockets definitely make Joey nervous on his way to work every day. There's even stories of people that have been knocked out of their boats and even knocked unconscious. The Asian carp situation, the silver carp problem, is really serious. They've invaded the entire Mississippi Basin from the north of the U.S. to the mouth of the Mississippi River. And here, this is a tributary of the Mississippi, and apparently they're here already, and they're monsters. All right, get ready. It's going to rock. We get to a section of the river that has a high concentration of carp. So Joey slows down and stays close to the edge of the river to avoid the jumping fish. I'm standing up to make it easier to dodge one if it jumps in my face especially if it's a 30-pounder. What creates this jumping reaction is the sound of the mortar. The carp hear it, they panic, and then they jump out of the water to escape. And suddenly, the fish starts showing up, but just not where I'm looking. You gotta be really careful, because if you get hit by a carp this size, a 30-pounder in the chest or in the face, it can be deadly, actually. You can get knocked over the board. Joey knows about it. Look how worried he is. This is getting really intense. There are cop jumping left and right into the boat, and Joey tries to avoid them as much as he can. But it's almost impossible. They're coming from all directions. Oh. Thankfully, Joey's pretty good at dodging the car. It's crazy, man. Nah, I told you about them fish, bro. You remember I told you about that? Yeah, Those things yeah, are yeah. dangerous, man. Unbelievable. This fish landed right in the boat. Imagine if you're going a little faster, you get hit in the chest, in the ribs, or, or in the face, actually, even worse. You get knocked unconscious and overboard, and then you drown eventually. But the real danger of this fish is actually for the environment. In the long term, what they're going to do, they're going to deplete the environment of its plankton, because they feed on plankton. They feed at what's at the bottom of the food chain. And by depleting plankton, eventually, they destroy the food source of other native fish. 
All right, man. Dinner. Thank you, man. Thank you. We're going to put this thing in an ice chest. We're going to cook this thing for supper tonight. Eventually, that's the solution to... That's, that's what we're catching them for. Yeah, exactly. If you can't get rid of them, you know, eat them, right? That's right. That's right. But we're not out of the danger zone just yet. Now we need to head back. And that means going through the gauntlet of jumping carp again. Seeing this carp jump everywhere is kind of funny. But I'm still a little nervous. Because if you get hit in the head by one of these fish, he could do some real damage. Woo. They're here. Wow, man. You almost got hit on that one, huh? Broke my chair, man. Broke the chair. You broke the chair? Snapped the chair in half, man. That's that. My broke gosh. The chair. That... Yeah, man, look. Broke the thing off. Broke the bolts, bro. That's unreal, man. The... Oh, yeah. When he hit that chair, his legs just broke off of that thing, man. That was unreal, bro. This is not the safest thing we're doing here, right? No, it's not safe. But I just want to show you the situation we go through every day in these bayous with these giant fish jumping in, breaking chairs and stuff. You know, it's very dangerous out here, it's man. It's bad, huh? It's bad. Yeah, you sure you're all right? Oh, yeah, I'm all right. The chair is not in good shape, but I'm all right. <laughs> long we all right, you know? Very dangerous out here. Joey really opened my eyes to the reality of fishing in the Louisiana swamps. I'll definitely have to be careful of these dangerous missiles when I'm deep in the bayou. Man, seeing this big crop jumping out of the water like that was pretty crazy. I can totally understand how someone could get hurt by one of these fish. Now I'm about to meet a boy who was injured by another type of fish. A shark, which is the first fish on my mission. Two years ago, Trent and his family had a frightening encounter on Lake Pontchartrain. Shelly? Hey, yeah. Uh, how are you? So what happened on that day? You were, you were out boating, is that it? Yeah, we were just boating and we were swimming. It's kind of, you know, a normal thing to go out on a sailboat or a boat and the kids jump off the boat and jump into the water. Making a lot of splashing noises. Making a lot of splashing noises. Yeah. And then what happened? And then I felt something bump my foot and it something started swimming around my foot. And then I felt like something bad happened to my foot. It fell out to my stuck a knife in my foot. And when I picked it up, I was bleeding all over, and they started screaming to my mom. Wow, that's it. They were out in the middle of the lake on a, on a sailboat and, and swimming around the boat, jumping off the boat, so making a lot of splashing sounds in the water. And if there's a shark around, for sure, they'll get its attention. And that's exactly what happened. He was a nightmare for his mother, Shelly. At this point, she had no idea what was happening to Trent. She just heard the screams of her little boy and rushed over to save him. Blood was kind of squirting out in a few directions. So at that point, I knew we just had to get, get back to shore and see a, a doctor immediately. Um, it wasn't until the physicians actually cleaned it off and saw the marks and the patterns that they said that it was a bull shark. And you never heard of a shark attack in the lake right before? It was never. a... So. Never heard of a shark attack. Lake Ponch Train is actually an estuary connected to the Gulf of Mexico where fresh water mixes with salt water. And bull sharks can make their way in from the Gulf. Have you gone swimming since then? I'm just kind of scared to go in the water now. Well, I would be too, right? Maybe I could take you out and catch a shark at one point. He wants that one that got a piece of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Trent. Thanks for sharing the story with me. Thank you very much. I'm glad that everything turned out all right. I feel bad for Trent and his family. But luckily, his injuries were minor for a bull shark attack. And it's proof that I can find bull sharks in Lake Ponch Train. So today, I'm heading out with someone who knows where to find the sharks in the lake. Hey, Mitch. How we doing, sir? Hey, how's it going, man? Good to meet you. Good to finally meet you. Yeah. Chatting some sharks in, uh, in brackish water. I think it's the first time in my life I'll ever do it. Well, we're going to try and catch one. Let's do it, man. Let's go. Let's go catch some sharks. All right, here we go. Looking for a bull shark with Mitch Chevalier. He's a... Uh... He specializes in shark fishing. He's been doing it for a long time, and he's caught many, many sharks, especially bull sharks here in Lake Porter Train. So hopefully, we're gonna we're gonna catch one today. To maximize our chances of finding a shark, Mitch takes me to one of his favorite spots, where Lake Porter Train meets Lake Bourne. While Mitch ties the boat up, I don't waste any time and cast a bait out. I'm dying to catch a shark just to prove to you that it can actually live in, in, in fresh water or in brackish water. But I guess the only way to prove it to you is to catch one, right? But after an hour, still no bite. I love your spot, man. It's quiet. That's yeah. what I love about fishing. It's quiet. The, the, the great outdoors, you know, it's peaceful. Yeah, it's pretty loud out there, but it doesn't bother me too much. No? No, not at all. 
Looks like Mitch is right, because I finally got a bite. Fish on. Fish on. All right. All right. Hopefully I can show you a shark very, very soon. But suddenly, the fish drops a bait. Is it still on there? No. Looks like you had pretty good pressure on him at one point. That was a shark, for sure. Yeah, look, your teeth marks. You got a cut mark in it, and he's scaled. It's crazy. That's pretty frustrating. But at least that means there's sharks around here. All right, all right, fish, fish, fish. Come on, take it, take it. I'm gonna feed it some line. Feed him some line, feed him some line. Come on, shark, you take it. He's pecking at it. It's as if this shark really wants it, but he just... He's poking at it, you know, he's like, top, 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 but he doesn't take it. Finally. The fish decides to commit. All right, I think we're on. All right, keep tension on it. Yep. All right. Fish on. Fish on. All right. Finally. Big handshakes. Wow. Yep. Typical of a shark, right? Very typical. We're both hoping it's a shark. But if it is, I don't think it's a big one. Oh, it's a bull red. Big old bull red. It's a redfish. It's not a shark. Man, it's making me work for it. Look at this fish. It's a nice redfish. It's the biggest redfish I've ever caught, man. Want to grab the rod, please? All right. All right, man. Nice right. fish. Look Woo. how fat that fish is. That's a big fish. I'd say that one's about 38 inches. Nice one. And it's not a shark, but I'm pretty happy right now. That's a big redfish, a red drum. And they actually get their name because of, because of the drum-like sound that they make. And what's interesting in this fish is you see the black blotch that they have on the tail? It's actually to confuse predators. They might think it's the eye, so they hit the tail instead of hitting the front of the fish, which is the head. And in this case, it can survive the attack. All right. All right yes. Man. Awesome, man. Congratulations. May, may not be a bull shark, but uh, I don't bull care. Bull red, bull shark. They yeah, it's a bull, same. right? It's a bull. <laughs> Beautiful redfish. That was a great redfish. Though it was far from the monster shark I'm after. But for now, I'm meeting someone who can help me find the other prehistoric fish on my list. I'm gonna get back to sharks. But right now, I'm gonna go after another predatory fish that lives in the swamp, the alligator gar. To help me catch an alligator gar, I'm meeting with a guy who's a pro at finding them. Eric is a local fisherman, and he wants to hit some spots deep in the swamp. What a huge gar. Eric. Yes, sir, Mr. Cyril. Hey, how you doing, man? Pretty good, pretty good. All right, nice to meet you, finally. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's cool, I'm looking forward to it. Well, we got some jugs ready. Yeah. Let's go get some gar. Keeping with the local traditions, Eric uses jug lines, which is a technique where bait is put on a line tied to a floating jug. Let me tell you, he's not kidding around. Look at the size of the hook he's using. Big fish. That's a thing from the future. Look at that motor, man. It's so big. It feels like we're in Mad Max right now. Where you gotta go. And we're headed to a real no man's land. The swamp is filled with massive alligators and the jumping silver carp are everywhere. Plus, you could really get lost out here. There are also old levees throughout the swamp. So to save us some time, Eric wants to see if we can take a shortcut over one of these levees. That's the levee right there? That's the levee. And you want to fish on the other side, right? Well, we're That's... actually gonna fish on the other side. Okay, all right. Because it's not gonna happen today, though. <laughs> no. We ain't got no water. Yeah. You hear that? Yeah. Cyril, don't, don't move. It's a big snake. But look at the size of that thing. Let me tell you, this rattlesnake, I don't want to get close to it because uh, the, the venom is so dangerous, you have no idea. This thing will ruin your life. They'll shut down your nervous system, everything. I think I'm just gonna back out of here. Yeah, let's go catch some gator gar, man. Yep. It's huh? like a it's like a plan. Since we couldn't take the shortcut, we have to take the long way through the swamp to get to Eric's favorite spot. And when we finally get there, we're not the only ones around. Alligator. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> it's crazy. We have a couple friends here, huh? Yeah. 
Eric and I get to work baiting the jug lines to catch a gar. So what we're doing here is we're waiting for any movement we can see on the on the jugs. As soon as we see a, a jug starting to move, we're gonna get on the boat, get us on that jug as soon as possible, grab the line and start fighting the fish so he doesn't uh, have time to actually swallow the, the, the bait and so he stays hooked on the, on the corner of the mouth. And with all the jugs in the water, the waiting game begins. Eric. Hey. You know what's funny? We had to go through the whole swamp. It took about two hours to get here. We could have parked the, the truck right on the, on the bridge and fished from the bridge. Well, uh, the, the she said no, no parking. <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted to show me some countryside, right? That's it. The swamp life. Yeah. We wait for a while, but then we spot one of the jugs on the move. Something's taking the bait. You got one down there. It's far jug. He's moving, huh? They're cutting to the left. How long have they been in the water? What, 10 minutes? Yeah. Let's go out and check this out. We got some action. There's uh, one of the jugs that uh, started moving, but it stopped. So I don't know if there's a fish on it yet. Was it that one moving? It might be the wind playing tricks on us. We wait for hours, but none of the jugs have moved. So I decided to give it a shot with my rod and reel. You never know. Here come the bugs. Man, they're eating me alive over here. A couple of them just picked me up. My feet came off the ground. <laughs> ah. But the only bites we're getting are from the bugs. And it looks like they're not the only ones coming out for dinner. We're literally surrounded by alligators everywhere. And bugs. Ah. There are too many alligators in this spot. So we decided to bring in our lines to avoid catching one by accident. And right away, we realized why we had no bites. Well, I think we've been feeding the, the crawfish. Man, if that's crawfish, that must be a million of them. Look at what the crawfish did. They ripped all the flesh off the bait. Check this out. They just left the bones. That's been pecked on pretty good, too. Yep, they all are. We pick up all the jugs, but one's missing. So we head downstream to try to find it. But before we get very far, we realize that we have an even bigger problem. Man, oh. gosh. <laughs> That's insane. I've never seen anything like this. There are gators everywhere. You definitely don't want to fall in here. It's a lot of eyes. Look at that big Christmas tree out here. Insane. You see all those eyes gl glowing in the dark? Those are alligators. Look at that. There's got to be hundreds of gators here. And now, the alligators are coming to check us out. Curious. They're coming right to you. Wow, that's a big one, too. Look. He's coming right for us. Look at that. Are oh, they curious or what? They'll come in to check us out. Look at that. We're surrounded by gators. That's insane. I've never seen that many alligators in the same spot. Pretty soon we're surrounded. We're safe in the boat, but still, it's probably a good time to get moving. Suddenly, we spot the missing jug. It's against the bank, and I'm sure it didn't get there by itself. There's got to be a fish on that, uh, that jug line, right? Well, uh, my betting is going to be on the alligator. Yeah, because garfish ain't going to go to the bank like this. So be careful in there. There's something on there for sure. He's pulling you there. Yeah, it's tangled up. Oh, it's a gator. Jeez. It's a gator. Hey, that's a big gator, too. Man, releasing this guy is not going to be easy. To release this alligator, we gotta keep it both sides to remove the hook. But that means getting close to those teeth. You got a pair of pliers? Yep. But we gotta move quickly to keep the alligator from getting injured. Watch your nose, watch your head. Nice job, man. Eh? Hooks out. As wow. you see, it's bent. The alligator was hooked pretty good, but he's free. Man, I'm so glad we managed to get the hook out of that gator's mouth. You know, I hate to leave a hook in a fish or in a gator's mouth. Good job. Good You're job. an alligator wrangler, man. <laughs> Thank you. You did well yourself. Seven foot alligator, but not what we're looking for. You think that was seven foot? Yeah, about seven foot. Yeah, we want seven foot alligator gar. That's what I'm gator. talking about. <laughs> it's starting to get pretty late, but we keep going. We're determined to find a monster alligator gar. Eric wants to try a very unusual spot. So we leave the swamp and head for the canals in the suburbs of New Orleans. There's alligator gar in here. 
Bunches of them. Really? Oh, yeah, they're that everywhere. That close to the city? Right here. And no alligators. They, they don't care really too much for the brackish water. We got a lot of alligator gar, a lot less alligators. Alligators don't really like brackish water. So at the very least, we won't catch one by accident here. We drop in a jug line, and I cast out another bait. It's good to be back with my good old rod and reel. I love it. Especially for this type of fishing, you know, when, when fishing for gar, it's really important to know when to set the hook. And it's hard to know when to, uh, when to do it, because the fish, usually what they do is they take the bait, they start swimming off with the bait. And if you set the hook too soon, you might just rip the bait out of the fish's mouth. But if you set too late, the fish might have already taken the bait in, swallowed the bait, and you don't want that because you, you would hurt the animal. So it's really important to feel the fish moving to be able to know when to set the hook. All of a sudden, the jug starts to move. It must be a big fish because it completely pulls the jug down. But he let go. If the fish didn't feel the hook when he grabbed the bait, then there's a good chance he'll bite again. Jug move, you gotta bite. Yeah, yeah. You got a bite? I'm gonna give it some line so it doesn't feel any resistance. Come on, fish, come on. Take it. Yeah, he's got it, he's got it. Yeah. yeah. That's a good fish. My friends, I think we got a good fish on the line right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's All a right. monster. That's a nice fish. That's a good fish. Oh. Hold him. Look at him. Look, he is a fighter. Oh, he's got a jumper. Look at that. Boy. It may not be the huge guy I'm after yet. All right. But this is still a serious fish, and it's too big to bring in by hand. So Eric has to use a lasso around his buddy. All right. Oh, he's off the hook. Oh. <laughs> Beautiful gar. Man, I'm so happy that's exactly what I wanted to get. I'm glad we got away from the gators. Good job, man. Yes, sir. Thank you Good for job. taking me to this spot, man. You got it. How big do you think he is? Uh, he's probably about 60. 60 pounds? Yeah, he's good fat. Yeah, yeah, he's heavy, man. I, uh, I can feel it. Gar can breathe air, but I still want to put this fish back quickly. Let him swim off on his own. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> All right, man. Sorry for the slimy yeah, handshake. Yeah, nice there. and slimy. <laughs> I'm not sure your wife is going to like that smell, man. Oh, well. I'm she's used to it. Yeah, she's used to it. Congratulations. Good job. You care for a little more, a little a little more slime? More. I'll give you a little bit if you want it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You take some home with you. Eric helped me catch a pretty big alligator gar, but it's still not the monster I'm searching for. I also still haven't caught a shark yet. But I'll have to wait, because right now, I'm headed back into the swamp to see if I can find an even bigger gar. That's Louisiana right here. That's the swamp. It's beautiful. I love it. It's definitely a beautiful place, but it's also a dangerous one. The bayou is an endless maze of swamps and flooded forests, teeming with gators, snakes, and spiders. But if I want a monster gar, I have to go as deep as possible into the swamp. I've already seen how many gators are out there. I don't think they'd attack me, but when you're this low in the water, you never know. I arrive at the spot Eric told me about. And it looks like I'll have company here. <laughs> Some gators around. But apparently, that's the spot. Besides all the gators and the big storm closing in, the conditions seem pretty good for finding an alligator gar. They, they love this, this type of environment, you know, like still water move, the water that doesn't move, not too much current. There's not a lot of, barely any current here. But the problem is I think I'm gonna get hit by, by a big storm in a second here. I'm starting to get really nervous. I'm totally exposed to lightning out here on the water, especially with my rods in the boat. But I don't want to get fishing right now. You know, you don't want to have two antennas sticking up like this under under a storm, especially when there's lightning. Another day. What am I doing here? <laughs> gator infested waters under a storm. Try to catch an alligator gar. <laughs> it's cool, but right now it's not so cool. I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna go under those trees there. 
Well, I think that's it for my little gar fishing trip. At least for now. But about 10 minutes later, the lightning stops, so I head back out to fish for gar. But there's so many gators. And I don't want to catch one by accident. One in particular seems really interested in me. It's not very big, but it's not afraid of me at all. I avoid any sudden movements and slowly creep past them. Finally, I find a spot without alligators. I still have a bit of hope I'll find a monster gar, but at this point, any gar would be good. Oh, it's not my day. Man. Not even a nibble. I'm soaked, I'm cold, I'm hungry. It's really time to go home. I don't like to give up, but you know what? That's fishing. You can't always win. So far, I've caught a nice gar, but it was still far from the monster I'm looking for. But the huge gar will have to wait, because right now, I'm headed to the Gulf of Mexico, and I'm determined to find the other predator fish I'm after, a big dusky shark. Today, my friends, we're on for a big shark. Hey, guys. How you doing this morning? How you doing, Eddie? I'm right, how you doing? I'm pretty good. What's up, Captain Mikey? Mikey, nice to meet you, man. Big sharks out there? Yes, sir, big sharks. Yeah. Big bulls and big dusties, big silkies, and uh, some spinner sharks out there. If you're ready, we'll board up and see if we can't catch them. Captain Eddie and his first mate, Mike, have caught hundreds of sharks in the Gulf, so I'm in really good hands. I tie on a super strong rig, and so does Mike. They're monsters where we're headed. Eddie tells me that the first spot he wants to hit is really good for big sharks. And guess what? It's an old rig that was abandoned a while back. Man, this old rig got beat up by the hurricane, huh? Yeah, all that twist and steel. Check this out. This old rig was hit by Hurricane Katrina, so it's uh, it's not operational anymore. It was damaged, uh, pretty damaged by the by the storm. Any metal structure like this in the middle of the ocean, it provides shelter for fish, and it also creates a reef. You know, because little organisms, little little algae, little barnacles come and attach to the structure, and from there on, you have little fish that come and feed on that, and from there on, you know, like you have the whole the whole food chain all the way to the top apex predators like sharks, and that's exactly what we want to catch: a big shark. All these little red dots you see are sharks. Wow. No time to waste, so I put a bait out right away. You're marking any fish at 100 feet? Yeah. How many feet is it here? 400 deep? feet. 400 feet? Really? Wow. I'm sending my bait down 100 feet, and they'll still be 300 feet from the bottom. Somewhere down there, there are sharks on the hunt and I'm hoping there's a big dusky. We're leaving the rod in the rod holder for the initial strike, the initial run of the fish, because let me tell you, those fish, they're so powerful, they're so big, they can rip the rod out of your hand, you know? So you let the fish hook itself, and we're using a circle hook, so it's gonna hook itself on the corner of the jaw here, and as soon as it's on, grab the rod and start fighting the fish. Now, we just have to wait. But there are lots of predators down there, so we don't have to wait long. Here he is. Mike runs over to put a fighting belt on me, because I'm on a big fish. But suddenly, the fish stops fighting. It's a big fish, but it doesn't move like a shark. I don't know what it is. It's not a shark. Probably a snapper or a group or something. Then, something even bigger attacks the nope. fish on my line. I believe you got a shark on. Yeah. Whatever the fish was, I think now it's a shark. Yeah. I think the shark's got it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a shark that has the fish in its mouth and it's not letting go. Come on. This is a big shark, but I've almost got it to the boat. Eddie moves in to grab the leader. But then. Ah. Oh, no. Uh, pull the, what happened? Pull the hook. 
Pull the hook. Yeah. Man, he pulled the hook right here, right out of the boat, and there was a big shark. And I hooked what, whatever it was, but it was not a big, a big shark at first. And, uh, and during the fight, all of a sudden, I felt that boom, that big bump on the on the line. I think the shark took the, the fish that I was fighting and had it in its mouth all the way to here. It took the bait at the last minute. I'm really disappointed I lost that shark. But then, I spot two shrimp boats, and I know they'll be magnets for hungry predators. So Eddie takes us towards the shrimp boat that has the most birds following it. Because usually, when there's birds, there's food. And if there's food, there's predatory fish, and hopefully sharks. This is such a cool sight. You have such a feeding frenzy going on here. The shrimp boat is pulling some nets. And eventually, when they're going to bring those, those nets in, there's going to be bycatch. And those predator fish, they, they know that eventually that's going to come, and they're going to get a free lunch. I'm telling you, it's packed with predator fish underneath here, between sharks, jack bells, you name it, it's all down there. I put on the fighting pad, because I have a feeling I'll be in a big fight very soon. And almost immediately, I get a hit. Go, fish, fish, fish. Fish, 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 fish. Here we go. Here we go, that's a bag. That's a really good bite. Here we go. All right. All a good one. That's a good fish. Oh, yeah. Seeing how this fish fights, I'm pretty sure it's what I'm looking for. The way it swims, you know, like the, those head shakes that I can feel, that you can see on the rod tip? That's a shark, that's typical of a shark. It might be the dusky shark I'm after, but the line is too close to the motors, so we have to do some quick maneuvering to avoid getting cut up by the propellers. Good job, Cap. The fish is now directly under the boat, but clear of the props. It's a shark. It's a shark, all right, but it's neither the species nor the size I want. It's a spinner shark, huh? Yeah. It's not the dusky shark we want, so we're going to quickly get it off the hook so we can get fishing again. But it's not easy. These sharks are very agile and can spin around in a split second and bite you. You've got to be careful. Watch your hands, guys. Eddie and Mike try to remove the hook a second time. And this time, we get it. All right. Good awesome. job removing that hook. Yes. <laughs> That's great. We got him. You guys rock. <laughs> awesome. At least we found the sharks. But now, it's time to catch a dusky. So to increase our chances, we put two baits out. Oh, here we go. Here we go. All right. All right. All right. Well, we hooked up. Yep. Yeah. This is a powerful fish. Eddie tries to chase it with a boat. He's taking a lot of line. And this fish is so big, he straps me in for the fight. That's the part I don't like, <laughs> getting hooked up to this rock. <laughs> You're gonna be okay. That's the part I don't like too much, getting hooked up to the rod, you know, because if you mess up the drag, you know, the, that line is so thick, you know, it's not gonna break, so you're going overboard. <laughs> you're going swimming. Inch by inch, I try to bring the big fish to the boat, while Eddie tries to keep the boat pointed in the right direction. Feels like a good one, huh? Yeah, it's got some weight to it, man. It's big, I know that. Sharks don't normally fight that long. After 20 minutes of fighting this powerful fish, I can't feel my arms. And on top of that, the sun is really beating down. Thank you. Here it is. Oh, yeah. It's a big shark. But the fight isn't over yet. Yeah, I got it, I got it. Oh, that worked. How big do you think? I figure about eight, ten foot long. I've caught a lot of fish, let me tell you, a lot of big fish. But this is, this is big. Finally, I managed to bring him back up to the boat. All right, big dusky. Woo. There he is. Big shark. Probably about three, four hundred pounds. Nice shark. This is a beautiful dusky shark, at least eight feet long. I finally caught a big shark in Louisiana, and it's time to let it go. You get the hook. Yes. Yeah, right. Good job. Good, Good job. job. Now, it's time to get back to shore for some unfinished business. 
finally caught a big dusky shark. And now, there's just one Louisiana predatory fish left to catch, a huge alligator gar. I caught a good sized gar with Eric, but he wasn't the monster fish I'm after. So I'm heading out today with a commercial swamp fisherman, Ricky, who specializes in catching alligator gar. All right, that's the man. Ricky is definitely hardcore when it comes to alligator gar. Even his license plate says so. What's going on, man? How you doing, man? Doing? Good to meet you, finally. Me too, man. That's cool. So how's the gar fishing? Oh, it's pretty good right now. Yeah? Uh-huh. Monster, the thing I have. Monster? How yeah. big? Oh, uh, it's about six and a half foot. Six and a half feet? Head like this. A head like this, yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to catch. Oh, yeah, big one. You ready to go then? Yeah, yeah. I, I brought my rods. You you mind if I fish with my rods a oh, little you, bit? or? You try a little bit, you know? You might catch a little one, but I got all the big ones on my line. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, we'll see about that. In this part of Louisiana, alligator gar are abundant. And Ricky catches them for a living. So if anyone can help me find a monster gar, it's him. What's your biggest gar? Uh, I go an eight foot already. Eight foot? Yeah. Eight feet long, imagine. That's a giant fish. That's a, that's a monster right there. That's what I want to get, man. Ricky's taking me deeper into the Louisiana swamp than I've ever been before. Ricky also fishes with jug lines, and they're spread out over a lake. So the first thing we gotta do is find him. And for that, he's gonna need a hand. I can't see good, I can't see far. But, see right. good, but, I can't see but luckily, the buoys are pretty easy to spot. Right there, yeah, you see it? Fish on. There's a fish on it, huh? Yeah. See it moving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, there's a fish on this line. Oh, you missed it. They suck, man. <laughs> oh, man. Ricky lines us up to try again. It's cruising, man. <laughs> oh, man, you missed it. I'm going to have to jump in the water to get that thing. Yeah, wait. All right, I got him. Oh, yeah, nice fish. This fish is far from the monster I'm after, but it still has a mouth full of sharp fangs, and it's fighting hard. I've got to be careful getting this fish into the boat. Normally, I release my fish, but this one is Ricky's, and fishing is his livelihood, so I really don't want to lose it. Ah. Oh, you got me good, right in the hand. I just got bit, so Ricky takes over and pulls the gar into the boat. They have two rows of fangs, so you got to be really careful. That's, uh, I was not for a second there, and boom, he got me in the hand. A little blood, it won't hurt, right? Oh, no. I'm not sure if it'll help. But I rinse out my wound while Ricky deals with his car. You all right? Yeah, it's OK, man. That's like an everyday cut for you, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ricky's covered in battle wounds from alligator gar. But the most interesting scar he's got isn't from a fish. A shotgun? Yeah, 14. Here, come out right really? <laughs> Unbelievable. Ricky got shot when he was 15 years old. Can you believe it? With a shotgun right through his butt. Unbelievable, man. <laughs> because of my hand, Ricky and I switch places, and I drive for a while. There's an orange one and a, and a white one over there. The first jug line we come to has a fish on it. But then... You can't always win, right? All the lines start coming up empty, and Ricky's not too happy about it. This one has nothing on it? No, That's what I never need. Nothing on it. Nothing on that one. There are no more fish on Ricky's jug lines, but that's okay. He says he caught some great fish yesterday, and he's already got two nice ones in his box from today. Man, I had a lot of fun catching them on the jug line, on a, on a hand line, but now, you know, seeing them in the box, not my type of thing. But at the same time, I totally respect what Ricky's doing. You know, like he's, he's been a commercial fisherman his entire life. That's how he makes a living, and that I, I fully respect. And uh, you got to remember, every time you have a fish on your plate, it either comes from a farm or from uh, commercial fishing. Hey, Ricky, you mind if I try to catch one on a rod and reel? Oh, you might have a chance. You might get one. <laughs> you might get one. <laughs> to help me catch the biggest gar possible, Ricky wants to go even deeper into the swamp, where almost no one fishes. We've come pretty far, 
and driving back at night through the swamps could be tricky. So we'll have to leave before dark. That means there's not much time left to catch a huge alligator gar. I would have preferred that the fish bite me on my left hand, because I might still need my right one today. At least I hope I will. Come on, fish. Oh, here we go. Here we go. He's on. Yep, there's a fish right there. Oh, it's got some weight to it. Oh, there's a That's a big fish. Oh, yeah, tonight. Woo! All right. The fish on my line is so strong, it's pulling our boat. Oh, look. Keep going, man. Taking that drive. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, yes, indeed. Big fish. This is a big gar. Exactly the fish I came here for. I can't lose it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ah, man. All right. Yeah. Take your time with him. You don't catch him. I didn't think it was that big at first, but now I saw it come up to the surface. Oh, yeah. It's a really big fish. Oh. Running for you. What's wrong? coming up to you. He's right here. The battle is almost over, but there's a problem. I'm afraid I'm gonna lose this fish anytime soon because it's barely hooked. It's really close, but I can't put too much pressure on the line to bring it in, or I might lose it. Yeah, you that one. I'm gonna throw you in the bio. Yeah, that's the fish I've been looking for. Man, that's a nice fish. Do you mind if I put it back? He'll be a breeder. Oh, no, but uh, it's kind of hard to put a thing in the boat. That's why I'm trying to think about getting into the water. Are there, are there a lot of gators here? Oh, yeah, sure, dude. Yeah, but they won't attack me, right? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Watch out. We don't want to release this guard near the hungry gators. So Ricky and I carefully bring it on board so we can move it to a safer spot. Yes, that's the monster alligator guard I've been chasing. I'm so happy, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, you, got you got the spots, huh? This fish will be a big breeder. So Ricky agrees that we put it back to make sure he'll have fish to catch in the future. These fish can survive out of water for a long time, but because they can breathe air. But I still want to get it in the water as soon as, as soon as possible. All right. Sit down right in the water. Yeah, because there's a ledge here. There's a drop. It's a nice fish. Exactly what I came here for. Where he wants to go. He's going. Me too. <laughs> uh, this it. fish is fresh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it, yeah. <laughs> fish pull you over. Oh, man. That was a big gator guard. I came to the deep south on a mission to catch two prehistoric predators, the alligator gar and a dusky shark. Finding these fish took me into the gulf and deep into the bayou, and it was pretty intense. Got me good. But with the help of some great people. You guys rock. <laughs> I finally caught the two monsters I was looking for. It <laughs> <laughs> can be deadly, actually. It can get knocked overboard. What am I doing here? <laughs> Gator infested waters under a storm. It's not my day. All right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a mess. Oh. It's crushing my, 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 my family jewels, man. 